The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. This evening, I will speak on be careful of what you see. Now, it is important that you have an eye. All the parts of the body that God gave us are of great necessity. In fact, Jesus said the eye is the light of the body. Now, blindness is not just an ailment, it is a tragedy. A hard dreams pass. Eh? We knew be friend. Now you live on this planet, and yet you don't see things around. So the eye is good. It is the light of the human body. If you have to close your eyes now. You will see darkness. But when you open the eyes, it is your light. It is good to have an eye. And, and to have a good eye. Dan can see. Now Jesus even went for to say that watch and pray. Now Jesus called so I can say, share. Uh, now he is not saying see, but he says, watch, take a close look at things around you, which includes seeing and being vigilant. Otherwise, you will enter into temptation. Peter said, our enemy, the devil, is plowing around us. Seeking someone to devour. Now, Osman for Peter Mayati as you say, your town for no, or Bupomu said, Jatane Nami and Chaya, or Pobi Ameneno. So we need good eyes to be able to escape the temptations of the enemy. And until you hear, see, Benya, a new one, a yapa, a year to me, a Janier for your bon summer in Sasha Hudu. Now, the devil, by his corrupted wisdom, is always trading, and sometimes he may give you a product. That is so appealing to the eye, only to take Jesus from you. Now, the He may give you a product that is so desirable to the eye, only to find a way into your heart. Now, to me, the idea be careful what you see. We have eyes. But be careful what you see. So be very, very selective and careful in the things that you let your eye behold. Now we have said that there are three gains to the human spirit. The ear gate, the mouth gate, and the eye gate. So today I will dwell on the eye gate. Once upon a time when Israel conquered Jericho, the instruction from Joshua was that nobody should take any of the accursed things in Jericho. Now, as someone Joshua said, But you see, if Achan did not have an eye, he wouldn't have seen and therefore wouldn't have convicted. But because he had the opportunity of having eyes, he saw an accursed thing, 
He converted for it and he was cursed. And not so show be a year for no Akana. Oh, anyone, as I'm going, oh, near anyone, go, go, who no ma, so anyone who ain't he, oh, who no ma, a year for one, and you are so, and anyone who ain't you know, or then a sack of card, dear, not no me, a was so, a man a braboy, no me. If he had not seen, probably he himself and his whole family wouldn't have died. And when this uncle, Nenny Wanko, and Kamijidi said, or no one casa, Nenny Bushia for, and Kanyadi, or who ever to one. Be careful what you see. And Tishin ye. Now, for the share. sake of the audience this evening, I will be situating this topic in the context of sex and morality. Now, from the Garden of Eden. See, you share Eden through Moa. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Now in Genesis chapter 3, the first few verses describes the fall of man. And I want to read from a screen. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to man, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Now you see the question mark. Now that is what the devil does. He always questions what God has said. And you find out whether you really understood what God said. Now now from verse 2 he quickly makes an appeal to the eyes the woman said to the serpent we may eat from the tree in the garden let's move to verse 3 but God did say you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. Let's listen to the devil come back to speak. Verse 4. You will not surely die. Very, very subtle. Now, the devil is not disputing the fact that you will die. But he is only introducing a description. Surely. The serpent said to the woman, that you will not surely die. Now let's move to verse 5. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now he's talking about your eyes will open. And you will be like God. Knowing good and evil. That is, that is to say that your eyes will be so open that you will be able to choose your own good and evil. So that you don't live under God's instruction. The Let's look at verse 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes and also desirable to gain wisdom, she took some and ate. She also gave some to the husband who was with her, and he ate it. When the woman saw, pleasing to the eyes, then when she had, she had taken it and ate it, now the Bible says that she realized, or they realized that they were naked. So they ran to hate themselves. When God came around, 
He knew what had happened and he knew where they were. Nevertheless, he called them and questioned where they were. Now, when we heard your voice, we hid because we are naked. Then God said, I see there's an intruder, an introduction. Who told you? And eat of the forbidden fruits. Now God knew that the devil has come around. But he went and clothed the naked body. Giving us an instruction that naked bodies needs to be clothed. Now today, the tighter, the better, the shorter, the better. But naked bodies ought to be clothed. Because the body is so tantalizing, it is food. Let me say it again. The naked body is so tantalizing, it satisfies. Say eda de jano eyadea ayese enshama echuchinyum edeba yese emma ome I think so that is she be yes. correct <laughs> let's put our hands together for him <laughs> yeah I like his interpretation be careful of naked bodies so show who ye ewo ni pedu eda de jano the devil knows it. So he uses it very effectively because of his possessive nature of the soul. It has a possessive effect on the human soul. Be careful what you see. Want us to read a long passage. We read 2 Samuel chapter 11 from 1 to the end. 2 Samuel chapter 11 from 1 to the end. Read from verse 1 to 4. Read from verse 1 to 4. From verse 1 to the end. I will ask um, Dennis to read. Amen. I'm reading from 2 Samuel chapter 11. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. And David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, Isn't this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him, and he slept with her. She had purified herself from her uncleanness. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. So David sent this word to Joab. Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent him to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked him how Joab was, how the soldiers were, and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah left the palace and a gift from the king was sent after him. But Uriah slept at the entrance to the palace with all his master's servants and did not go down to his house. 
when David was told, Uriah did not go home. He asked him, haven't you just come from a distance? Why didn't you go home? Uriah said to David, the ark and Israel and Judah are staying in tents. And my master Joab and my Lord's men are camped in the open fields. How could I go to my house to eat and drink and lie with my wife? As surely as you live, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to him, stay here one more day and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. At David's invitation, he ate and drank with him and David made him drunk. But in the evening, Uriah went out to sleep on his mat among his master's servants. He did not go home. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it with Uriah. In it he wrote, put Uriah in the front line where the fighting is fiercest. Then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. So while Joab had the city under siege, he put Uriah at a place where he knew the strongest defenders were. When the men of the city came out and fought against Joab, some of the men in David's army fell. Moreover, Uriah the Hittite died. Joab sent David a full account of the battle. He instructed the messenger, when you have finished giving the king this account of the battle, the king's anger may flare up and he may ask you, why did you get so close to the city to fight? Didn't you know they would shoot arrows from the wall? Who killed Abimelech, son of Jerubbesheth? Didn't a woman throw up an upper milestone on him from the wall so that he died in Tebes? Why did you get so close to the wall? If he asks you this, then say to him, Also, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. The messenger set out, and when he arrived, he told David everything Joab had sent him to say. The messenger said to David, The men overpowered us, and came out against us in the open, but we drove them to the back to the entrance. We drove them back to the entrance to the city gate. Then the archers shot arrows at your servants from the wall, and some of the king's men died. Moreover, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. David told the messenger, Say this to Joab, don't let this upset you. The sword devours one as well as another. Press the attack against the city and destroy it. Say this to encourage Joab. When Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. After the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing David had done displeased the Lord. Amen. Now the last line says that, but the thing David had done displeased the Lord. Katono, am I yet? And when he said, Sena, near David, ye no, and ye eradid, and so eradiani. When we say, be careful what you see, we are not just saying that, just looking and staring. And yes, ye can say, wo shad ye, na wo shan hai. No, if you you look without the combination of the mind, you don't see anything. So what Now when we are talking about seeing, we are saying that the eye focuses and the mind draws images in. And until you see, because we who are the only actors, we need to be so aware. Now I dream on so so exercise no. So that you can see or form images in your mind that you can see without the individual being standing in front of you. You can just see pictures that you have formed in your mind without that fellow being in front of you. So you can see with the naked eyes, you can also see by forming images in your mind. 
Na afin so ya jine enso so etumi etwe enfoni e de toho. Now, this is a story that is a sad story. Na o hwe sa asemia e ya semo a e ye mobopa. Especially when it has to do with David the worshipper. Now, this, this story ended in a way such that somebody's husband had to be killed. He had to be killed for David to conceal the act. Now, she said, yeah, David, the Oye, in the Kobane, said, as I said, Obikunu, Ewu, Sebe, Obi, to me, Akata. Now, the worshiper has turned to be a, a murderer. And Tiafi Osha Obia, or your sorrow for no or sorry, you know, Afidia or Bedane the Pecumni. Why? It's all because the eyes caught a certain woman bath. A son, I didn't see a son say, New way a cochet or baby, not only Jerry. Now you can't avoid seeing things. And Yadi, I will be to me, yes, who know maybe. I don't suspect that. When he was climbing up his roof, he had the intention of going to see this woman's nakedness. No. Now, but the eyes caught the woman bathing. But I suspect that he dwelled on what he saw. Because the Bible says, and the woman was very beautiful. Especially the way the key renders it means that if he says, it means that he, he looked and he had to look and look. Now, sometimes you can see something like that, but you should be able to excuse your eyes. Now, I said, Obano no social no ane huwa fese no. Nechile se wanshe no bakupe. Shebium, sen shebium, sen shebium. Na su mijidi se, ube tu mi shad yebiya, ube yiwe ni efi wapre kope. I suspect that, no, when he saw it, pick the image. He started dwelling on the image. Uwi ina fi oma ajino efa infoni no. Na fi ina ajino no, e si sa infoni no so. I don't think that he left the roof. I'm sure that he turned again. And I don't know if he was saying He kept tossing the image over and over in his mind. And the mind is the door to the heart. Now we shall. As he kept tossing and making these pictures in the mind, the, the mind opened to the heart. And when he brought all the swara, now she said, "Oh, to turn for me, dinner, konyaba, I want a jini mono, a huano, a jino, ma akumane puno no ebiye." Once it has landed in the heart, the heart will produce. Now, afe bra etu mi ura akumane mone di ne chese akumano ebe swaba. So when he asks, "Who is this woman?" Afe ubi sa ese na obey oye huane. They told him that this is Bathsheba, someone's wife. That should have deterred him, but no, he wouldn't take that for a stop. Because he was a king. He called this woman and laid with the woman. Then the woman sent a message later that I'm pregnant. Now, why did the woman fall pregnant? It began with an eye that caught a human naked body. Now, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I not see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't but, but the greater sin was yet to be committed. All because the eyes have seen 
a naked body. He caused this man to come home from battle. Now with the simple reason that when he comes home, you go and live with the wife. So that at least he can say that somebody did it. Yet Uriah will not go home even when he had made him drunk. The king was still thinking through and planning as to what to do. Eventually, he settled on killing Uriah. Now he thought that by killing him, then nobody will know what has happened. But the scripture says what he did is please the Lord. Sometimes and some news come to you and you are thinking of abortion. And sin we don't just fall into sin, but when we keep tossing evil in our mind, it gets to a point where there is conception. Then you have to give birth. Now, 